the compliment is not really to me it's the compliment to the concept and the character hello everybody this is amitabh bachchan and i'm privileged to have uh, <laughs> nagi ashwin here the director of kalki full privilege and uh, it's uh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning here mm. in mumbai and i've just uh, come back at about 3 in the morning after seeing kalki for the third time and uh, just cannot explain the the wonder and the experience that all my friends you know we watched the film again and uh, so i thought that there are many aspects of the film you know nagi which uh, a lot of people um, put questions to and uh, in my mind also there is a lot that uh, that comes to me when i when i think about kalki explain not just to me but to the audience in general how you how you thought of when we spoke to uh, priyanka and sapna they said you know um, um, after the last film they waited and asked you what you're going to do next and you said uh, you know i i don't know and almost after a year or so you went to them and said i have something and after that you know priyanka was saying that uh, after hearing it I, i couldn't sleep for a couple of days <laughs> and then she rang up Sapna has said you know we have to start getting to work on this so you know what went through your mind and how did you conceive this in to be to be very honest sir i thought this story would be probably one of the last films i'll ever make like <laughs> i thought this would be my retirement film <laughs> but yeah uh, and well, had, we won't let you do that <laughs> yeah and i had i had like a uh, Uh, a smaller story maybe something that was not as ambitious as this that i wanted to start off with and uh, and somewhere along the way like uh, those few months after mahanati i was coming across either articles or like some sort of videos about the chiranjeevis or about some sort of a mahabharata mm. connect and, and and i was even seeing some articles where i was seeing that maybe some production houses in bollywood were starting to think about mahabharat or ramayan right. and all of that at that time and i was and i had the story i had a germ of this story already by then and i was like okay so maybe it's time to bring this out of uh, hibernation and I, i took it out and i started living with it for a few weeks and i realized that the energy that it would probably require to bring this to life and to bring it uh, uh, to bring it in front of people was something that i probably had now and i don't think to be honest me swapna or priyanka fully knew what we were getting into when we had that first narration that's what they also said you know they they suddenly realized oh my god uh, we need to start working on this now if, if this concept and this dream has to fructify yeah we started with one concept artist and we thought you know we'll conceptualize the main sequences of the film but as we kept going deeper into that rabbit yeah. hole so to speak we realized every single thing had to be conceptualized and every yeah. single thing had to be built and we suddenly needed <laughs> we realized it needed an army yeah you showed me a photograph of ashwatthama uh, who has aged and is now uh, fighting sort of bhairava yeah. fighting bhairava and uh, for someone to have had that kind of a visual in mind and then to be told about the title yeah. kalki and 2898 ad yeah. and i couldn't understand that so um, maybe you could explain for the benefit of the audience core of the story was the first scene in a way so 6000 years after the after the death which of is krishna which comes in the in the subtitle you know yeah so 6000 years six, have passed ever since yeah. krishna gave the shrap to uh, to ashwatthama, ashwatthama. yeah uh, so 6000 years after when krishna is said to have left his body was 3102 bc so to speak so yeah, yeah. exactly that would uh, lead up to 2898 the story of ashwatthama happens after the 18 days of the kurukshetra yeah. it happens at the very end like after the victory after everything this is probably 18 the, days of the war for yeah, kurukshetra yeah, yes. yeah yeah after the 18 days of the war this is the last thing that happens in the mahabharata yeah. so to speak the most important uh confrontation between the pandavas and the last kauravas so to speak yeah. so i felt that this 
was the ending of this story sort of but it's also the beginning of another story yes and it doesn't finish like i feel the it's not finished we just even in the mahabharata uh, for what i have read it just is like ashwadhama is cursed and he walks into the woods like he leaves krishna and bhima and everybody aside and he walks into the woods we don't know what happened to him so that's like a starting of a story now i wanted to know like if this man is cursed and he has been witnessing this entire kaliyug like that's the most interesting thought process like because he is this ultimate warrior but he's not interfering in the events of the kaliyug because he has a larger purpose so i felt that it it was audacious in a way for me to attempt to think that i'm finishing something that was left in the yeah. mahabharat but i was like nobody's done it yet so let's give it a shot yes but why did you think like this that i want to know what happened after that because in a sense the yeah. mahabharat ended yeah at the end of the war after 18 days krishna gives this curse to ashwatthama end of matter yeah but you said you thought okay what happened after that i had really loved this dialogue in that first scene sir what we did like after uh, ashwatthama says uh, you know uh, kill me now i'm ready yeah and then krishna says no uh, death is not a punishment and then we have a wide shot of this battlefield with hundreds and thousands of people who are dead yes and that for me uh, even when i was writing it that just felt like such a it had a deeper meaning it feels like you know mahabharat has killed millions of people but krishna right now standing there and saying death is not your punishment having to live is your punishment that just meant like maybe there is a whole karmic level to this whole thing mm-hmm. and uh, and for ashwadhama also the, i felt that anger like though he was very cruel in that particular moment that anger was justified because he was he just felt that his father was killed very unjustly and uh, he, his father was a great warrior and he yeah. was killed yeah. in the most uh, unjust way so his anger was uh, justified in his own way so now his redemption is also very justified but we never know if that redemption ever comes because it's not like ashwadhama is uh, is always been evil or something like that he's actually a very uh, noble warrior he's meant to be an avatar of shiva people say like uh, drona prayed to shiva to get a roopam of shiva okay. uh, as his child and that's how ashwadhama was born there's a beautiful beautiful couple of pages in the mahabharata that shows uh, uh before uh, ashwadhama enters the pandava camp uh, to massacre uh, the rest of the pandava army he he sort of uh, krishna had put out a barrier he had put out like his magic in a way he's put like the biggest uh, celestial guardians around the camp and he went to he went back to uh, the kingdom and Ash- ashwa came and he realized he can't cross the celestial guardians and for that one time he became like a rudra roop like he became shiva he entered one pyre and he came out like shiva and uh, this kripacharya watching this and he became so scared like he actually ran away from that scene because ashwadhama was so terrible and so yeah. magnificent so that character always intrigued me like you can't have an avatar of shiva who is the greatest is a son of the greatest warrior and not know how his story ended so that was the point of evolution of the idea and thought of how to continue yeah, with this yeah yeah and he wasn't also like the most popular mahabharata character because from what we usually exposed to in serials or books or anything we know about the main ones we rarely know much about ashwadhama but i feel uh, he was uh, he was multiple times capable of destroying the pandava army if not for krishna mm. like uh, there there were astras that only he could use and only krishna knew how to stop them after 6000 years yeah you hear the words of of Ash- krishna saying you know that when there is no water yeah uh, in the ganges and these were all very symbolic but very pertinent little things that kept coming up how did you conceive that the futuristic world 6000 years from now is going to be looking like this there were a lot of uh, 
things that we try to extrapolate sir like for example there is massive drought now there is uh, clean air is already such a problem in so many places in china or even delhi for that yeah. matter that you know buying buying air is going to become a common thing it's actually become a common thing already there yeah. uh, so and the fact that physical currency is not going to exist has already happened so yeah. a lot of things that when we started writing we thought were very futuristic have yeah. already happened by the time the film released um and we had to just try to understand that if there is no water and and the biggest problem is fertility i feel yeah. like of of man and of the soil like those are the two biggest things that will change the world uh if human beings suddenly de- become infertile to a certain level we just have barely a 100 years uh, before we go extinct yeah. in a way and if the soil stops being uh, being kind to us and it becomes dead in a way then how much uh, synthetic food are you going to develop and how will that society be that lives only on synthetic food yeah so those are the two big things we tried to explore though we didn't have time to really get into the details of it but that was the thought process yeah during the portion when they were designing all this yeah. were there any questions that ever arose in your mind multiple sir there were <laughs> there were <laughs> uh because like almost everything uh, because when you're trying to design a whole world which with the ecosystem with an yeah. economy yeah. with uh, all of that there'll be so many contradictions like yes. even in even just the architecture of things there'll be like what are your vehicles running on like if it's running on this then why doesn't don't these people have access to it and what access does the complex have so suddenly we're designing a whole world right right from the economy to its power systems to grid to like what do people do how are they how are they making money and you know is there a welfare system in this world <laughs> <laughs> like there's so much discussion and after I think 5 6 days of brainstorming we just suddenly we usually just stop and say enough let's get back to the yeah, story. Yeah. I was talking to some people about Shambhala and what it was and that is something that they said that this Shambhala is something that is under the earth. Mm. It's there in the Buddhist thought process. Yeah. I personally felt that uh, There is a scene when Mariam comes forward before she sings that song, right? To that circular, yeah, that mandala, yeah, yeah. Which I, I, I don't know whether I'm correct in saying that, but it's a very Buddhist. Uh, yeah. Uh, so is that what went through your mind? It was, sir. I think the idea of Shambhala is something that is very similar to our culture and Buddhist culture, even Persian culture. They have different names for yes. it. uh and i felt that it's, it's very interesting that all of them have names somewhat similar also somebody calls it shangrila somebody calls it shambhala and all of them say that it's a place where people are going to a uh, sort of retreat to in the kali yug when you know adharma becomes so much more outside and that's where the avatar will come the savior will come so yeah. to speak so i felt it's very interesting that so many cultures have the same idea mm-hmm. and uh the idea of the symbols in shambhala was like a mix between the chakras that we have yeah. the sri chakra and all of that combined with the mandalas that tibetans have which are yes. so similar yes. yeah. so uh, so that that was that we just wanted to find i think in the production design discussions that we were having we were always trying to see like how culture would be amalgamated in 6000 years it wouldn't be like sharp lines between cultures and traditions yeah. things would probably get merged a bit yeah but it's you know it amazes me how uh, one person's brain <laughs> could have um, could have designed and thought of all these things it i could, couldn't have sir there was uh, there was a production designer nitin zihani we had multiple uh, our uh, meetings uh, we have a concept design team which is really good they're from jaipur fully indian like uh, immortal collective we had a in-house storyboard artist venu i mean for a movie like this i would say that we probably required a bigger team but mm-hmm. the team that we had was fully on board and uh, everyone was constantly ideating i mean i i definitely had to okay the final aesthetic and i would guide them and direct them the way it had to go but uh, if if not for the concept designers and nitin's brain also it, yeah. this wouldn't have come out the way it has 
Kamal that day when we had a general, yeah, you yeah. know, when we were talking to the rest of the guys, as I had said something very nice. Yeah. He said, you know, a lot of the uh, filmmakers come to me and, and they describe the story and, and, and they give me very efficient made, efficiently made Concept storyboards. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the point is that his opinion was that how, to, how does this storyboard actually get into practice and, you know, what is the reality of it? It's all right to make some drawings and come. But um, he said that when I saw this and when I heard Nagi, I, uh, I thought, you know, gosh, it's going to be another one of those storyboard <laughs> things. But then Nagi showed me some visuals which he had shot and I, I believed yeah. and just went ahead with it. What was the idea of the complex? The idea of the complex was, uh, it was like everything is there, it's beautiful, it feels like heaven, you know, there's water, it feels like, you know, animals are frolicking happily and it's uh, clean air and all of that, but there's something that feels unnatural about it as well. There's something that doesn't feel real and it doesn't feel, uh, it belongs there. So, it was that aspiration of uh, man, I feel that uh, when you go to the complex in the film, there is this idea that you need a million units to enter the complex yeah. in this world. That idea was like a, a creative idea of yours. Yeah, it was a creative idea. It was something to give a goal uh, to Prabhas's yeah. character. And, and everybody in that world needed, they basically were working around that goal. They wanted to make a million units to get into the complex. But my idea was that you can't make a million units by being straightforward. The complex wants you to backstab each other, the complex wants you to fight amongst each other to make that million units and they're just going to be at peace because these people are never going to unite. That is what is happening in Kalyug, you know. You know yeah, yeah. This whole back backstabbing and everything, you know, yeah. everyone wants to uh, grab and go on to the top, you know. Correct, it's, correct. It's that famous story about all of us, you know, we are all like cockroaches and we don't want to go, <laughs> go up, and yeah. reach the top of the lid of the bottle where they're in. So, um, you are catering to an audience and there are many portions which, um, well, which I felt, you know, as, uh, as somebody who's been in the film industry yeah, yeah. could understand that, yeah, okay, we are playing to the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this <sure>. is Prabhas. <laughs> For sure. This is a Telugu film. <laughs> yeah. And Prabhas is, you know, is Telugu. Yeah. And you have to understand that he's like, he's massive and he's, yeah. he's godlike there. Yeah. So many elements which you know, a lot of people felt in the first half because of its length and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at times they were not able to understand or say, you know, come on, let's get on with the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact is that it's like an intro to the hero of the film, <laughs> yeah. but not just the hero of the film, but also the hero for the Telugu speaking <laughs> nation. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and that is something that, you know, people perhaps overlook. But yeah. We have to give it to them. At the same time, yeah. you know, giving out to the audience, uh, you know, I've never lost a fight and I never will. Yeah. Which are actually Krishna's words. Yeah. <laughs> and you've given it to, to Prabhas, to Bhairav. Yeah. True. But the point is that for the common language that the Telugu nation that is, is Gaga over Prabhas, it has a it has an alternate meaning, meaning as well. Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that is, you know, those are the clap traps. Yeah. For, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. it's, uh, it's, I just felt it was a wonderful amalgamation of playing to the gallery, yet not entirely submitting yourself to them. Yeah, yeah. It was a tricky line, sir, for yes, sure. Yeah, that's a very thin line. Yeah. I mean, I would love to go and sit in a theatre in Hyderabad. <laughs> And sit with this Telugu speaking audience when they're seeing it because they must be going wild they are, when, they when, are. They, when they see Prabhas saying this and, and all the comic interludes that he has. And um, they had wonderful little snippets, you know, that she comes out with which are valid for the film, <laughs> yeah. yet extremely valid for the common man. I mean, they, they how did you think of that? It, like you're saying, it's a f very thin line, sir. Like, there were a few things in his intro, for example. Yeah. Like, I think uh, uh, a new audience from Paris wouldn't make anything of it. Yeah. Because there's a hologram that is glitching. 
it says possible rebel, you know, five star bounty. Yeah. And then it just glitches just for a moment right next to Prabhas and says rebel star for yeah, like an yeah, instant. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's a clap trap for yes, sure. Yeah. And uh, but for anybody on the outside, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. It is hard to design something like that. And there was something also where Buji says, uh, you know, even I have some fans and Buji says, yeah, yeah, you have a rebel fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, for another audience, it doesn't make any difference yes. because he was a rebel. We, we established right. that. No, that's what I felt. It was, it was a brilliant amalgamation of uh, playing to the gallery, <laughs> gallery in, playing to the audience, in Hyderabad, yet not right. moving away yeah. from the concept of the film. Yeah. Uh, the concept of fertility. Yeah. Was that uh, a, a story imagination or is there some kind of a link? It was a bit of a story imagination, sir. Mm -hmm. It felt like it felt like in the Kali like what is the last thing that can be taken away from us is the gift of life. You know, people's uh, morality and this and mm -hmm. that and everything. And the last thing that would die is the actual gift of life, like whether it is food or whether it is the chance that we procreate and make and continue our species. Mm -hmm. So, just the fact that, uh, uh, you know, that there was a dialogue which said that I will be born in the last womb of the Kali uh, yeah. So, that was there in one of the earlier drafts and uh, it felt like that was the most dramatic way to introduce our saviour. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of questions being asked is, how do you manage to perform when you don't have the props around you. Yeah. We, we really tried in this film to uh, build as much as we could, sir. Like uh, whether it was the off sector where there was desert and the truck and everything or Shambhala, the bridge. We tried our best to uh, give as much but but yeah, there were definitely sequences <laughs> where it was just a blue screen. And yeah. Uh, we all know that, you know, Indian cinema works on poetic justice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I keep quoting this from, from my father who used to watch um, yeah, a film during his last days every evening and asked to ask him, what is there in watching a film? <laughs> so he used to say that, you know, I get to see poetic justice in three hours. <laughs> so during the length of the film, at the end of the film, there's poetic justice. To bring that kind of poetic justice yeah. in Kalki, in the Mahabharat, is it going to be factual? Is it not? I mean, this we will discover in yeah. in part two. But uh, did it ever cross your mind that you know there has to be this this aspect of poetic justice in the film? Definitely, sir. I think so. I think Ashwadhama's character itself is that idea of poetic justice. The way his character starts and the way it uh, needs to uh, finish. Yes. But, yeah. There are many little things which you know. Uh, which were done and shown in in, in the film, yeah. but its essence was actually realized by the audience. Yeah, yeah. it's like the like uh, Sumati's Agni Pariksha in a sense. Yeah, yeah, which was so beautifully done. Yeah, and we talk about Agni Pariksha, but we never visualized that it could be like this. Yeah, and you have the carrier of the next avatar go through this Agni Pariksha, which you show Sumati walking through this, you know, ball of fire. And yeah. nothing happens to her. Yeah. Whereas when the fighters go through it, they just <laughs> burn up. Yeah. So, uh, what was the thinking behind that? That that is definitely one of my favorite sequences sir, yeah. in the film because it also parallelly brings in all the three characters. Like it brings in. It's Ashwas. a kind of a uh, chastising of of yeah. uh, Sumati in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, yeah. and Ashwa realizes at the same time, Bhairava yes. at the same time. And uh, for me personally, it was the uh, reference of the Krishna and Vasudeva walking through the river in the Dwapar Yug, like as the river parts for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt like in the Dwapar Yug, the uh, water element parted for God to give him safe passage. And for me here, it felt that the fire element parted for God to give him safe passage. Yeah. So that, that was my thought process. Yeah. I mean, there were so many challenges even uh, from the point of view of, say, uh, the DOP or the cameraman and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You have an eight-foot giant yeah. <laughs> and you have the rest of the cast here. Yeah. And there were so many times when we took hours because how do you light up a place 
where you're going to see both the characters together. Correct, correct. So if my lighting is going to be different. Yeah. And my whole atmosphere is going to be different. My concept of being looking down to talking everyone. And everyone's look and everyone there. looking up yeah. to talk to me. Yeah. And how we actually managed to do that. Yeah. You know, there were times when I was having this little stick poking stick. out from behind me and <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. my face is not here, it's somewhere <laughs> up there. Yeah. And uh, it was quite amusing, but but how wonderfully it all sort of... It all came together. together. Like yeah. how many times we had to do each shot three times exactly, or four times. Yes. Yeah. Even when I was writing, I always thought Kalki was two watches. Like it was a repeat watch. Like the first time you watch the film, you watch the film. And the second time you watch it, you watch it with the perspective of having seen it again. So you see so many things uh, that yeah. in, a, in a new perspective almost. Yes. In a way, it's almost a new film, the second watch. Yeah. So, uh, I always felt it was a two-watch movie at the least and uh, it, it's great because I think we went for the evening show, like all of us to see it and on the first day and by the evening show, there were people who already knew the dialogue, so they were already watching oh, wow. it the second time. Yeah, I, I finished seeing it for the third time yeah. last night. I'd really like you to just kind of summarize the whole experience before we end up talking. Yeah. Because uh, we could just carry on, you know. For, for a long time, yes, sir. I think uh, for me, it was just, uh, it was a dream definitely to put together this world and all yeah. of the influences and the stories that I've loved and putting it together in a world in a coherent and uh, an understandable and enjoyable way. Uh, and to see now, today, that that dream has come true and people are actually agreeing to watch such a film and love such a film and yeah. accept it. Uh, it's not just, I think, just for us as, as a team that's been working on it for three years and the actors that have put in so much time to do it. It's not just a win for us, I feel. Yeah. I feel it's a win for the industry in a way because like producers, actors, directors, writers, now have a validation that they can think differently. Yes. Now they have a validation that they can green light projects uh, which probably wouldn't have uh, because now there's a Kalki. Now there's a Kalki, a producer will listen to a story that is a mytho or a fantasy or something yes, yeah. and an actor will be okay to uh, green light a yes. script. So I think we have moved forward in the right direction and I'm very glad that Kalki was able to do something uh, to have that change happen. Yeah. I just wanted to, I mean, we won't get a chance uh, as often, so, so I just wanted to ask what, what in, in the scenes that you've done, like what were your favourite scenes in the film? Yeah. It's very difficult to pick one particular scene, you know, Nagi. Right. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a member of the cast and crew and, and it's our film, but uh, quite honestly, you know, it's very difficult. Really, the purpose of talking to you, Nagi, was that. Yeah, yeah. That it's... Yes, it is a film. <laughs> yes, it is make-believe. But it's make-believe. <laughs> it's the belief that we want you to go and see because it's been made with belief. And that belief is what is the strongest point that I feel in the film. Yeah. And each time I see it, it's that belief. Yeah. I hope that you know the audiences will, will go and see this film with the kind of interpretation that Nagi, the director, had and his vision and the way he has explained uh, the many aspects of the story. Uh, it's a film that anybody will identify with because it's, you know, good over evil and yeah, yeah. all these, all our films are like that. Yeah. But to give it the depth and bring that mythological history, culture into the open, and prove it, that is what was challenging for Nagi and that is what I find he has been able to uh, find victory in that challenge. So. Now we wait anxiously for part two, <laughs> for part two. Uh, how is it all going to end and, and uh, so we look in great anticipation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks and so much, Nagi. It's been wonderful you. talking to you. I, sir, I know you don't uh, like or appreciate this, but this is one of the few chances we have to thank you for no, all no. your patience. No, no, it, it, it's, 
you know and and the whole country sir like whoever i speak to yeah. i know you've heard this already so many times but it's just such a pleasure to see you in that avatar in that role yeah. and so many people i did a bunch of interviews yesterday and everybody just said thank you for giving us this amitabh yeah, bachchan it's it's, uh, it's it's a, a fan fallacy thing. actually <laughs> uh, i don't believe i know that. you don't like any of no, it it's not a case of liking i just feel that um <clears throat> the compliment is not really to me it's the compliment to the concept and the character also. and that speaks volumes about the film <laughs> it's it's not a a personal you know okay i like this star yeah and he was good and he acted very well and so on and so forth so yes, when they compliment a prabhas or a deepika or anyone else and kamal um, you're actually complimenting the concept of the director nagi who was able to conceive and put together this story it's all very well to go to an audience that's coming out of a theater yeah, and say kaise lagi film bhaiya so in this tarah bahut achhi film hai ye unko zinda nahi samajh mein aaya ye nahi hua it's not that i think that we need to catch some people who the youngsters and say you know let's sit down and have a chat and what did you actually see what did you think of what was going through your mind when you were watching all this it would make a very interesting subject and uh, i'm going to catch i'm going to catch a bishay can please do sir that would be great my granddaughter and and have a chat with them much like we've had here yeah. and ask them some very pertinent questions right thank you nagi that'd be great pleasure. sir yeah, such a so pleasure much, such yeah. a pleasure sir thank, thank you. you so much uh, that's the end of our very long uh, intricate <laughs> conversation and i hope that you enjoy the film when you see it thank you so much namaskar Great sir